everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to have a little talk to you about how to become a makeup artist. So I have had a few messages from girls and boys that want to know how I became a makeup artist and how they can also go about becoming a makeup artist. So I thought that would be a good thing to do a video on and just have a little chat to you about how I went about it and different ways to go about becoming a makeup artist. So I've got a little list on my phone of points to talk to you about. So first of all, I'll start with number one. So number one is you have to have passion for it. Being a makeup artist is not some easy job like I think a lot of people think it is. It is a lot of hard work and if you don't have the passion for it, you're not going to do the work. It just, it's, that's just naturally how people are. So if you have the passion for it and you've got that drive and you really want to be a makeup artist, you will do the work and the work won't feel like work. If you enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't feel like you're working. It just feels like you're doing a hobby or something like that. But really, it is your career. So you have to have passion for it. Number two is that you do have to have some kind of artistic talent. So if you are a good drawer or you can paint, most likely you will also be a good makeup artist. It's basically like the face is a canvas and you are painting on it. So you've got to be able to see um, flaws because you've got to try and hide them. You've got to be able to see the good points in somebody's face so that you can actually highlight them and make them more obvious. So it's basically like painting on the face. Generally speaking, you've got to be a creative person um, and have some kind of talent to become a makeup artist to begin with. A lot of the time people ask me, did I go to college to become a makeup artist or do I have some kind of qualification? Yes, I do. I did a year at makeup college and I have a diploma in specialist makeup artistry. Do I think that helped me? No. <laughs> Basically, I was self-taught, so I am a self-taught makeup artist and I did go to college just so I could have that piece of paper so that I could have the diploma saying that yes, I know all the hygiene, I know the business behind makeup artistry and I can also do makeup. So you don't have to go to college by any means. A lot of the makeup colleges are very, very expensive and I know, especially in Australia, you have to pay up front for those makeup colleges. So unless you want to do something like um, special effects, for example, in which case I would recommend that you go to college because otherwise it's going to be really hard to learn it. If it's regular beauty makeup or bridal makeup or um, special event makeup, then it's not essential that you go to college, but it is a good thing to have a diploma just so that you can show your potential clients that you do know the theory behind it, you know the hygiene aspects um, and basically that you can do makeup because people, if they're paying top dollar for your services, they will want to see that you're going to be able to provide them that service. So a diploma is good in that aspect, but some of the world's best makeup artists actually never went to college and they are self-taught makeup artists. So you definitely do not have to go to college to become a makeup artist. Just look into it and see what um, is available to you. If you have the money and you have the time, then do go to college because it will benefit you in some ways. But if that's not a real possibility for you, then don't let that hinder you whatsoever because you can absolutely still become a makeup artist. It's all about practice, which leads me on to my third point, which is practice. So you need to practice on yourself, you need to practice on your friends, on your family, on strangers if they'll let you. Basically, you need to practice on everybody. So you need to learn different eye shapes, you need to learn different face shapes, you need to know how to um, touch a person so that you're not going to like poke them in the eye or press too hard on their skin. It's all about feedback. So if you're practicing on different people, they're going to give you the feedback and then you can utilize that so that you can become a better makeup artist. Watch YouTube. YouTube is actually a brilliant, brilliant resource, especially for makeup artists because you have people like Lisa Eldridge, Jacqueline Hill, doing makeup tutorials and they are professional makeup artists so if you can learn from them all the power to you. There are also a lot of tutorials on YouTube that are to do with makeup that aren't actually by professional makeup artists so take what they say with a teaspoon of sugar or whatever that saying is with a spoon of salt, I don't know. Pinch of salt, take it with a pinch of salt because what they're saying may not necessarily be the correct way to do it on yourself but especially not clients. So if you want to be a professional makeup artist, definitely watch Lisa Eldridge, watch Jacqueline Hill, um, Nikki Tutorials, I'll have their YouTube names links down below so that you can check them out because they are so helpful and you will learn so much from them. Do ask for advice. So I know it seems a little bit daunting to message maybe your favorite makeup artist or somebody that you see on social media and you like their makeup or you think they're doing really well for themselves. It can seem like it's gonna squash your pride to ask these people um, how they got to where they are, but do it. Um, it's really helpful to have a mentor in this industry because at the end of the day, basically you're working for yourself. So you don't have a boss above you telling you what to do or giving you praise when you do something right. 
as a makeup artist, you are working for yourself. So if you have a mentor or somebody to look up to or someone that can give you advice that's in the same field as you, ask them because I'm sure they're going to be happy to help you. Do good makeup on yourself. So as a makeup artist, you are basically a walking advertisement for yourself. So always have your makeup done perfectly if you can because you never know who's going to see you, you never know who's going to stop you in the street and ask you where you got your makeup done or um, whether you know any good makeup artists and that's when you can pull out your business card and say hi I'm actually a makeup artist, I will do your makeup for you. So on another note have business cards, keep them plain, keep them simple and classy, have your name, your contact information, what you do, so makeup artist and give them some kind of link on it where they can type it into their computer and see basically some photos of makeup that you have done because no one's going to want to book you without seeing some prior work. Be prepared to work long, long hours. So whether you want to be a YouTube guru, whether you want to do bridal makeup or film or television or whatever kind of makeup artistry sector it is that you want to go into, as a makeup artist you have to work those long hours. Unfortunately it is just the name of the game in makeup artistry. Being a makeup artist is not a 9 to 5 job. Most of the time you are working around other people. Um, yes, you can be freelance, but if you're not working around other people, really you're not going to have a job. So for example, I could be on location or on set from 4 or 5 in the morning until 11 or 12 that night, possibly even later. So you've got to have a flexible schedule and you've got to be able to work at the drop of a hat and get there early in the morning, hang around set, touch your model or your client up all day and also be there in the evening to remove their makeup and pack everything up on set that is yours so that you'll be ready for the next day which is most likely also going to start very early in the morning. So as a makeup artist it's not all sunshine and daisies, you do have to work exceptionally hard. If you can get the job, do work on a counter. So whether it be a MAC counter, um, Chanel counter, who else is there? Benefit. Dior, Ella Masca. A lot of makeup brands have their own counter in a department store. So it's basically at the end of the day a retail job. So your job is to sell, but you will also have to apply makeup on people. And that is a brilliant, brilliant way to get your practice in. So you're going to have um, mature age women coming in to get their makeup done. You're going to have sometimes teenagers coming to get their makeup done, um, middle aged people, elderly people. All kinds of people are going to need to get their makeup done on that counter and that is a brilliant way for you to practice your makeup skills on different people, on different face shapes, different eye shapes, different looks. Someone might want a really, really natural look, someone might want a smoky eye and bold lip. It is great practice. Just remember at the end of the day though, it is a retail job so you will be expected to sell. So keep that in mind before applying for a job on a counter. It's not just doing makeovers all day. You do have to sell the products as well. Know what sector of makeup artistry you actually want to get into before starting your work. So in makeup artistry, it's not just one size fits all. There is film makeup artistry, TV makeup artistry, makeup artistry in the music industry. High fashion, editorial, bridal, special events, special effects. There are so many different types of makeup artistry and they are all completely different and how to get into that industry is completely different as well. So you need to establish to yourself what it is that you want to go into and then start working towards it that way. Once you know what you want to do, I highly recommend writing down your goal at the end of the day what exactly it is you want to achieve and then working back the steps from that and figuring out what steps you're going to have to take to be able to get to that end goal. If you want to get into bridal makeup artistry it really is a lot simpler. Um, basically what you're going to have to do is get business cards, maybe some pamphlets, flyers, um, maybe take out an ad in your local newspaper. Basically it's going to be a lot of word of mouth and once you actually establish a name for yourself you're going to have people coming to you wanting you to do their makeup but at the start obviously it's going to be a lot of hard work to get your name out there but then it is just about being professional, being quick, um, being personable and, and really building that clientele up for yourself. And bridal is a lot easier to be honest. There is a lot of money to be made in bridal makeup because there's brides all the time and every bride pretty much will leave their makeup done. And if you're a good makeup artist, through word of mouth your name will spread and you will have people contacting you that want you to do their makeup for their special day. Whereas on the other hand, if you want to do uh, film makeup artistry, editorial, fashion, TV, music industry, then you're going to need to get taken on by an agency. So an agency is kind of the same for models. Models will get taken on by an agency. The agents then find the work for their talent. The talent goes out and does the work. 
um, the client pays the talent for doing the work, the agency takes a cut of it, and then you get the rest of it basically. So your agent will find the high profile jobs for you, they will also take a cut of your pay. So if you want to get into the more advanced areas of makeup artistry that I mentioned, then you will need to look into getting taken on by an agency, and you will find that there are agencies at pretty much any major city in the world. They will also usually look after hairstylists, um, fashion stylists, photographers, um, and makeup artists. You may want to assist a professional makeup artist, so do your research, find out what makeup artists are working in the industry that you want to work in, contact their agent, and really, really nicely basically say that you would be willing to assist that makeup artist. You will not get paid for it, it is about learning, so you will get the experience from going around with that makeup artist, you might have to wash their brushes or get their coffee, but you'll be able to learn on the job what it is that they do and then you can take that and apply that to your own makeup skills. Building a portfolio, so whether you do bridal makeup artistry or whatever other kind of makeup artistry, you will need some kind of portfolio. So for bridal makeup artistry, you will maybe want to have a website or a blog where you've got pictures of bridal makeup that you have done so that your potential clients can go onto that site and look through your pictures and see the work that you have done. Try not to have it on a Facebook profile or an Instagram profile. Instagram is great for you know pictures of yourself and makeup that you're just practicing on yourself, but it's not very professional to have your portfolio as an Instagram account. So do try and get a website or something similar to that. WordPress is a good one because it's free so you don't actually have to pay for it um, and you can set that up as your online portfolio and on your business card you can direct people to go there and check out your work. On the other hand if you want to do film, TV, um, editorial, fashion, makeup etc you will need to do a lot of free work in order to build up your portfolio. So to get taken on by the agency you need to be able to show them an absolutely amazing portfolio and to build up your portfolio you need to do a lot of free work. So you'll need to go on websites like Model Mayhem for example and then you will need to network and contact people in your area that may be um, models, that may be photographers, stylists. Basically you will then all work together on a shoot. Nobody gets paid from the shoot usually, but everybody will be able to take home a print from that shoot and use it in their prospective portfolio. So the photographer will be able to use one of the pictures from that shoot in his portfolio, the model will be able to use it in her portfolio, you as a makeup artist will be able to use that photo in your portfolio. Just make sure that you're working with people that are not insane or wanting to kill you. So make sure that you're going to go somewhere public or that you're taking someone along with you because at the end of the day you don't know these people. So you just got to be careful when you're doing this free work. It's also referred to as TFP, which is time for print. So yeah, you're not getting paid for it, but you're getting the experience and you're also getting a print at the end of the day to put into your portfolio. So it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of free work and it can seem really draining at times, but if you want to be a makeup artist in this kind of industry, you need to put in those hours. Once your portfolio is complete, which may take a couple of years to be honest with you, then you can start contacting agencies in the city that you're in and basically showing them the work that you can do. They might say no, they aren't going to take you onto their books, you can then ask them why. So ask for a little bit of constructive criticism because maybe your pictures aren't up to scratch, maybe you need a few different pictures because you can't have pictures in your portfolio that are all the same. You need to show a variety of things that you can do as a professional makeup artist, whether it be no makeup makeup, um, a classic smoky eye, a really neat red lip, things like that. Finally, social media. So social media can be a lot of fun and it can also be a good marketing tool. So my favorite sites for social media are YouTube, obviously, and Instagram. So I post the majority of my looks on Instagram because there's such a great network of makeup artists on Instagram and everyone chats to each other and gives constructive criticism to each other. Note, constructive, no one's bullying each other and if they are, then that's really not ideal. But it is a great way to meet other makeup artists, models, photographers. It's basically a social networking tool. So utilize that and do chat to people because people will have different advice for you that you can take on board. You might be able to give them advice about certain things that they're not so sure about. And basically you want to create a supportive network around you that's going to help you towards your goal. So at the end of the day, being a makeup artist is a brilliant job. It is a creative job, it's artistic, and basically the work that you put in is what you're going to get out of it. So it's not an easy job in my opinion. Um, the work itself could be easy, but remember that you are dealing with a lot of different personalities, a lot of different people, you're working to time schedules, you have to do a lot of free work in order to get those jobs to begin with, and the pay is usually not regular, so you might work 
weeks on end, you know, seven days a week, and then you may get no work for a couple of weeks. So you really need to learn how to budget, and you need to go out and find the work yourself, unless you get taken on by an agency. But then to get taken on by the agency, you need to put in a lot of work in order to do that. So if you've got the passion and you've got the talent and you're prepared to work long hours, then you most likely will succeed in becoming a makeup artist. But just remember that if something is worth doing, it's worth doing well, but it's probably not going to be easy. But once you've reached your goal, you'll be able to look back and think, I'm so glad that I put in that work because look where I am now. So even though it seems hard and it might seem like a daunting, you know, that you're running uphill, anything worth doing is probably going to be a little bit difficult. So don't give up hope just because it seems difficult. If you want to be a makeup artist, practice on everybody, look into the different avenues of makeup artistry and find out whereabouts you want to go and then kind of write down the steps in order to get there. And that is how you become a makeup artist. So I hope you found that helpful and as always if you've got any questions just leave them down below and I will get back to you and I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye!